How to crochet a Chinese lantern. We're going to start with a magic circle with six single crochet stitches. I have videos linked in the description below that slowly go over how to do this step, as well as other steps in the video. There are two ways to make a magic ring. I'm going to demonstrate the default method, but the alternative method is linked below. It's sometimes easier for beginners. I'm going to put the written pattern description in the header so beginners can learn to read patterns as we go. The number in brackets at the end is the number of stitches that should be in the round. For the next round, crochet an increased stitch into each of your previous stitches. To perform an increased stitch, crochet two stitches into one stitch, and unless specified by the pattern writer, the default is two single crochet stitches. You're going to do a color change at the end of this round. If you have a different preferred method, feel free to use it. I'm going to demonstrate changing the yarn at the last pull through of the last stitch of this round. Start your last single crochet stitch, yarn over and pull the yarn through so you have two loops on your hook. Now swap the red yarn for the yellow yarn and pull the red yarn through both loops on your hook. Continue using the red yarn for the rest of the rounds. For this round, you will do a single crochet stitch, then an increase stitch, and repeat that sequence all the way around. The box in the bottom left corner shows you each stitch for the round written out. In order to keep your shape spherical, you need to make sure your increases don't stack. To do that, instead of crocheting SC2, comma, ink times 6 for this round, kind of like we did in the last, we split one of the SC2 ink sequences. Follow the box in the bottom left corner if you're unsure what that means. For rounds five through nine, which are the next five rounds, do a single crochet stitch all the way around. I'm gonna keep a sped up version of this in the video in case beginners wanna slow it down. I have a link on how to do that in the description. Otherwise, I'll meet you at round 10. Round 10 is like round 4, but in reverse, with decreases instead of increases. The box on the bottom left has all of the stitches written out for you. Round 11 is like round 3, but with decreases instead of increases. Now is the time to stuff with fiberfill. fill. 
Crochet a decrease stitch all the way around. To close, fasten off and cut the yarn, and then thread it through a tapestry or sewing needle. Insert your needle through the outer loop of each loop to pull it closed. Then hide the yarn inside the piece. Time to embroider the sides of the lantern. Thread your needle with around 2 feet or 0.6 meters of yellow yarn. Step 1. Insert your needle into the center of the magic circle from round 1. Step 2. Push it out at any random point in the color change from round 2 to 3. Pull the needle and yarn through, leaving a few inches of yarn tail. Step 3. Insert your needle into the bottom of the lantern where you closed it. Step 4. Push it out on the opposite side of the color change from step 2. Put another way, if you first inserted your needle at step 2 at 6 o'clock, push it out now at 12 o'clock. Pull the yarn through. Step 5. Insert your needle into the bottom of the lantern where you closed it. Step 6. Push it out halfway through the last two strands. Put another way, if the last or previous two strands were at 6 o'clock and 12 o'clock, push your needle out at 3 o'clock. Step 7. Insert your needle into the bottom of the lantern where you closed it. Step 8. Push out the needle on the opposite side of the color change from step 6. Step 9. Insert your needle into the bottom of the lantern where you closed it. Step 10, push the needle out in the middle of two strands. Step 11, insert your needle into the bottom of the lantern where you closed it. Step 12, push the needle out on the opposite side of the color change from step 10. Step 13, insert your needle into the bottom of the lantern where you closed it. Step 14, press the needle out between one of the two sets of strands with the largest distance between them. We're trying to make these symmetrical. Step 15, insert your needle into the bottom of the lantern when you closed it. Step 16, Push it out on the opposite side of the color change from step 14. Step 17, insert your needle into the bottom of the lantern where you closed it. Step 18, push the needle out in the center of the magic ring. Hide both tails inside the piece. Cut three lengths of yarn. The longest should be about three feet, the middle about one foot, and the shortest six inches. Wrap the longest yarn around either a fork or two of your fingers. Take the middle length yarn and thread it through the center of the loops. This yarn will end up being what you hang the lantern with. You don't have to use a tapestry needle, but I find it easier. Make sure both sides are even. Take the shortest yarn and wrap it around all of the loops in the upper third of the loops. Make sure the sides are even. Knot it several times so it is secure.
Make sure your middle length yarn is away from the rest of the loops and yarn. Now we are going to cut the bottom set of loops and trim the pieces of yarn. Do not include the middle length yarn. Make sure the pieces are about the same length. Thread both ends of your middle length yarn through your needle. Insert the needle into the bottom of the lantern and up to the middle of the magic circle. Pull the yarn through and tie together for your desired length. Trim the tassel further if you desire. You've now completed your lantern.